that's kind of funny. I was so busy trying to get everything exactly right that I forgot to put a mic in front of me. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to today's live stream. I'm Derek, and um, we're going to be talking about mouthpieces again today. Let me make sure my speaking volume is loud enough. It currently seems like it is not. All right, that should do a little better. Uh, you know what, it still seems a little low. Let me... All right. Okay. Well, you can chat me up if you if you feel like it's not loud enough. It's looking like it's a little low. And every actually, you know, I know what the problem is. I apologize. I am trying out some new equipment today. And it's I'm trying out some new equipment today and it's a little hard to actually get the level set until you start talking. But everything should be working now. So let's start over again. For those of you who see this later, you'll see the cut starting right about here. Hello and welcome to today's live stream. I'm Derek Wright, and today we're going to be talking about mouthpieces, specifically the inner diameter of French horn mouthpieces and what they do and what that means to you. Number one, let's talk about what the inner diameter is because it can be confusing to a lot of people. The inner diameter is not the rim width, the width of the physical rim itself, it is the space in between the two sizes, between the two sides of the rim. So basically the amount of space that your lips have to vibrate inside of the mouthpiece. That if you use a mouthpiece that is too small, you'll find that your sound can tend to be a little too tight. If you use a mouthpiece inner diameter that's too big, you could lose a lot of core in your sound and things can just sound woofy. So our goal is to find the right size. And this is why I always cringe when I see people who want to buy a mouthpiece based on what their teacher uses or based on what another famous player uses. Because unless they have your lips and your teeth and your face, you're gonna need something that works for you. Now you can try to imitate their sound, that's a good thing. But just blindly trying to imitate their equipment in order to get their sound is not something that I would recommend. So, how do you choose a mouthpiece? If any of you watched my live stream from a few weeks ago, I talked about um, thicker lipped players and whether they should be using, whether they should be playing French horn or not. And of course, I believe that thicker lipped players can do just fine because I've, I've done just fine. But you also know I railed against a mouthpiece known as the MDC the Holton Farkas MDC because it's very, very tiny and not really appropriate for people with, with big lips. So does that mean that people with bigger lips need larger inner diameters? Generally to a point, I, I find that something around 17.5 is a good starting point for, for most people, but just because you have thick lips, don't think you need to play an 18.25. And the opposite is true too. If you play 
if you um, if you use a tiny mouthpiece, there's no need for you to. Uh, if you have small lips, you can oftentimes use very large mouthpieces. Like just because of your tooth structure and the way things work for you, that works best. So today I thought I would just spend some time actually demonstrating different inner diameters and what it does to my sound. Because in general, even though your ideal inner diameter will probably be different from the one from my ideal inner diameter, uh, what happens to the sound when you go too small and what happens to the sound when you go too large will generally be the same. So this video can be used as a reference for picking your own mouthpiece so you can kind of know okay this is getting too large I'm losing too much core in my sound or I this is too small it's too strident maybe I should try something a little larger now I am watching chat I know this is not my normal uh, live stream time so people aren't necessarily um, watching out for it but I'm still gonna be monitoring chat and um, if you would like to ask any questions, I um, I'm still gonna be monitoring. I'm still online. Okay, let me mute that. Um, and I will um, answer any questions that you have about mouthpieces, horns, or anything else you're curious about. So with that, let's get started with the demonstration. I'm going to be using our Varus VX mouthpiece line to demonstrate the inner, the different inner diameters. But this can also be uh, translated to a lot of other mouthpieces too, um, particularly the Lasky mouthpieces, which use a very similar, you know, same cup, same rim contour, but but adjusting the different inner diameter sizes as the main thing that differentiate, differentiates the mouthpieces. Uh, I just, for those of you who don't know about the Lasky line and the numbering, if you add a one to at the front of the number, you'll get the size. So the 70 G is 17 millimeters. The 75 G is 17.5 millimeters and so on. For our various VX mouthpieces, we just put the sizes on. So it's a VX1725 or VX175. As a starting reference, here is what I sound like on my horn with my normal mouthpiece, which is the Varus PF. Okay, so now that we have that as a reference sound, uh, let's try the Varus VX1725. I'm going to be going from smallest to largest just to keep things, um, just to keep things in a nice order. But normally I would actually recommend starting off at a 17.5, you know, going up. And then um, if that doesn't work, you can go down. Oh. 
Next up is the um, 17-5. So I can tell you right away that the 17.5 felt much easier to play. As I play these, now I'm really curious. Um, among those of you in the chat, which mouthpiece do you, which mouthpiece do you think sounds better? And I see questions here. Uh, keep them coming. Um, once I'm done testing out all of the sizes here, I will get to them shortly. This next mouthpiece is the 17.75. So to me, the 17.75 um, continued the, it felt a little better, especially in the low register. Uh, let's keep going. The next one will be the 18. So to me, that's starting to feel a little bit too big. I felt like my tone wasn't quite as clear on that one as the 1775, but once again, I'm really interested in, in your opinions as well. The next one will be the last one in this line. This is the 1825. Thank you. 
And to me, that one was just hard to play. I felt like the tone really went away and it just just wasn't fun. So for me, if I was going to pick one of the various VX mouthpieces to try, I would be between the 1775 and the 18, verging on the 1775 because I felt like the 18 was starting to get just make my was starting to make my sound a little too diffuse. Uh, but if I were actually looking at new mouthpieces, I would listen to you know recording back and and consider what each mouthpiece did well or not. So let me get to some of these questions here. So from Samuel, how do you recommend testing out mouthpieces? How does Houghton Horns allow people to try mouthpieces out at home? So really the, what we do is we, um, we have a 15 day return policy. So you can buy as many mouthpieces as you want and then you can return them um, with free returns. So you're not even out the shipping um, within 15 days. Um, I know what a lot of people, especially students, are looking for is a program where they could buy a mouthpiece and be sent five and you know return the other four because, trust me, I know money can be tight. But for our shop, and I think for most shops, something like that just doesn't work out financially. Mouthpieces are not only expensive to you, they're expensive to us. So, you know, putting out five mouthpieces on trial without any sort of... Um, Without any collateral or cash for it, it's just not something I would ever um, expect to see. But we do try to offer a very generous return policy. Again, 15 days from the day that you receive the mouthpiece. And uh, then you can return it within 15 days, risk-free to you. You'll, we'll send you a return label and you can send back what you don't like. Assuming the mouthpieces are still in good condition. What is the inner diameter of the Giardinelli C4? Oh, and I see that was actually answered in chat. I'm actually, I'm kind of curious. What, what does it say on this chart? The thing about inner diameter measurements, I, I guess I should say this, is that between manufacturers, they become useless. So you can use inner diameter measurements to compare mouthpieces within one manufacturer's lineup, but you can't use it to compare between manufacturers because there's no set way to measure the inner diameter of a mouthpiece. There's no standardized way. So for example, like of a very different set, if you compare Shoki mouthpieces to our Houghton line, a uh, Shoki 17.5 is really about the size of one of our 18 millimeter mouthpieces. A uh, Shoki 17 is more equivalent to one of our 17.5 um, inner diameter mouthpieces. So just be be aware. You can't use them to compare um, compare between brands. So in that way, the inner diameter measurement is. Um, I wish it were more useful for that, but the Giardinelli mouthpieces have always struck me as very small, but again, I, I've never seen a measurement because if we took a measurement, it would be, it would be quite different than what, um, then uh you know then a mouth then a measurement that Giardinelli would have taken yeah you know, when Giardinelli was still in business and making mouthpieces. Let me see if there are any other questions here. Nothing in YouTube probably because I screwed up the screen the first time. Oh, and uh, John Erickson for comparison, I am a fan of the method using dimes. That is, that is a great way to compare between mouthpieces on your own. You just put a dime into, into the mouthpiece cup and you notice how far in it falls compared to other mouthpieces. Uh, can you, from Tracy, can you comment on cup shape vis-a-vis -vis horn type? I play a Yamaha hatch. So Yamaha hatch would be um, a Yamaha um, 
with a conversion from uh, West Hatch up in Wisconsin. Um, doing okay with a Howlton H2 currently. What I find is that the more bowl shaped the mouthpiece is, the more um, sonorous, the more the thicker the sound. And the more V-shaped the mouthpiece, the more flexibility um, you'll have as far as moving around. Um, most mouthpieces you find these days are cup shaped. And uh, common, not, not common knowledge. Um, I think people do, people do that because it's, people tend to think that cup shaped mouthpieces work better with uh, Geyer style horns. And I tend to like more cup shaped mouthpieces, not necessarily because I think they work better with Geyer style horns, but I just appreciate the sound. I appreciate the sound more. It just has more body of sound. Um, whether you're using that on a Geyer style horn or, or a Crispa style horn. I haven't found in, in my experimentation that one cup shape that you can make a generalization like that where like, okay, Geyer should use more cup shape. Crispus should use V shape. And if for anything, it's because I've seen Geyer horns that are more different from one another than a certain Geyer horn and a certain Crispa horn. There's so much more like a bell size, the construction technique used, the, the metals in the horn, the, the taper of the lead pipe, so much more than just rap that determine how a horn plays and which makes it so that you can't make a statement like cup-shaped mouthpieces work with Geyer style horns and V-shaped mouthpieces work with Crispa style horns. All I can say is that, yes, different mouthpieces will work better with different horns, but the only way to find out is to test them out. I wish there was something... Uh, a more simple way to put that instead of essentially just saying, well, you just, you just got to play and just try it out and figure it out. <laughs> okay. Let me see if there are any other comments here. Thank you so much, everyone who um, participates in these live streams. Uh, they make everything seem a lot less, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, that people are out there listening to uh, listening to these. And if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, feel free to uh, message our Facebook page or email us at, at sales at houghtonhorns.com. Or if you're interested in trying out our various VX mouthpieces, you can uh, go to houghtonhorns.com and check them out. They're really good. Um, they're priced at $89, which is you know, it's more expensive than the mouthpieces at 60 or $70, but it's not, they're not uh, too expensive. Uh, in comparison, our Houghton line of mouthpieces start off at $200 for a two piece mouthpiece. So this is affordable for a, for a high school student or someone who just appreciates a silver plated, a uh, one piece mouthpiece of which, you know, considering I use a silver plated one piece mouthpiece, I'm in I'm in that camp. Thank you, everyone, and um, I'll see you next week. Um, same time. Noon's not going to work for me for the next several weeks. So um, we're going to be pushed back to 1130. So same time as today. Thank you, everyone.